times there's ten and under for the children that are ten and under. My wife, fellowship hall. Them in the fellowship hall for the children that are ten years old and younger. Amen. Hallelujah. For the children that are ten years old and younger, they're welcome to go in there. Amen. Romans chapter number eight. Hallelujah. Romans chapter number eight and verse number thirty-five is where we'll read from today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 There's an awesome presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 35. Amen. Said, Who shall separate us from the love of God, love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded... Amen. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am persuaded, amen, that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. I am persuaded that nothing, amen, can separate us. Nothing. Hallelujah. So what could stop us? What could stop us? Amen. I am persuaded that nothing can separate us if our minds are made up. But unfortunately, there are those that will be stopped along the way. And I want to do my best to make sure nothing stops me. Amen. I want to make it. Amen. Let's love the Lord one more time today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, O oh God, that as you have been with us throughout this service, I pray that you would continue to allow an anointing to fall upon me. God, that you would bring conviction to those, hallelujah, that need you, and they have not made their whole heart right with you. I pray, O oh God, that in this service somebody would be touched, hallelujah, by the power of the Holy Ghost. And their lives would be transformed into you. God, we're praying today that there would be somebody that would submit, hallelujah, to the plan of God to receive the Holy Ghost and be baptized in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh God, that you would allow that to happen. In Jesus' name, let the glory of the Lord fall heavy upon us here today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I'd like to take a second text just for a moment or two, and I'm going to read another story. Amen. In the book of Mark, chapter number 10 and verse number 17, Amen. The Bible says that there was a, a young man, amen, a rich young man who had come to Jesus. In verse number 17, it said, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, and honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. He said, as far as, as, far as the law goes as far as the commandment goes I have kept the commandments I have observed these from my youth and the Bible said in verse number 21 then Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him 
one thing thou lackest. Go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and take up thy cross or take up the cross and follow me. And the Bible said that this rich man that had everything going for him and had kept the commandments and had done everything that he knew to do whenever he heard about just one thing that he lacked, he was sad in verse number two, he was sad at the saying and went away grieved for he had many possessions. It was so amazing that I, as I watched in the scripture, as I see a man earnestly desiring to know more about God and to know more about the things of God, if he, if Jesus would have told him, if you'll do this great deed, I think that he would have done it. If he would have said, now what you really need to do is you need to crawl on your hands and knees for a mile on a stone road. I believe that this young man would have done that. But there was one thing that the Lord said, I don't see a whole lot missing in your life. The only thing that I see is one thing that's missing. Amen. Eternal life is yours if you'll take care of just one thing. And the young man, amen, listened intently as he heard him say yet one thing. And he thought, surely, amen, if I can attain and to everything else that's been asked of me, only one thing, it's really not that big of a deal, but amen, it would be easy to take care of one thing. And the Lord gave him, amen, the, uh, the instruction. And, uh, and I don't know... I I, I somehow don't believe there's any of us here, amen, that have enough money to really worry about. <laughs> you know, amen, I heard Brother Krupp tell us at the, one of the last peanut brittle seasons, he said, you know the difference between you know, chocolate and money? He said, you can't have enough of either one of them. I like that. <laughs> he says, no such thing as having too much money and too much chocolate. <laughs> And uh, and I really did like that. And I know I know we don't. Uh, if the Lord told me to give everything that I had, it wouldn't be too hard to give away the ten dollars I got in my pocket. And it wouldn't be hard, too hard for me to reach into my bank account and give the, whatever's there. I'd have trouble telling them, my the fellas that that I owe the money to that's in my bank account. You know, I, I owe you guys. I'd have trouble telling them to explain that, but really don't have much beyond what it's give us this day our daily bread if you and I think every one of us are in that same boat you know if we got a couple nickels to raise together to rub together we're saying oh boy <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I'm not I, I'm not talking about that uh, but I, I think that in everybody's life there can be just one thing there can be just one thing and we can look at the rich man and we can say how ignorant that man is that he would not give everything to the kingdom of God how stupid that this guy was that he would be able to say no nah, I don't think so but I really don't believe that was the case I really believe that whenever he waited out it was just one simple thing and to us, it looks so, so easy. But to this young man, it, it, it was everything that he had lived for. And he said, you know what? As I'm measuring things out, yeah, there's one thing that can keep me from eternal life. He ran to Jesus. But the Bible said he went away sorrowful. 
I think whenever he was heading toward Jesus, he had his head up and he was doing everything in his power to get there as quick as he could and fall, fall before Jesus. He already knew what he was going to ask him. He already knew that he was going to run to him and, and it was all in his mind. I'm running there as quick as I can. I don't think it was a show. I don't think he was trying to t look. watch guys. This is, this is how I can act. He was not an actor. I think he was truly sincere in his actions. He was running as fast as he could. What must I do? What can I do for eternal life and yet whenever that one thing was approached to him he didn't run away but he went away sorrowful because there was only one thing Romans said who shall separate us just I don't know if there's just one thing that would separate us so, so when I read in Luke chapter number 15 and verse number 11 amen and it said and, and he said uh, uh, Jesus said there was a certain man that had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and he took his journey into a far country Amen. I don't know how far, but it was a little bit more distant than what he had normally went. It, I don't think it was that far. I think it was just a lot farther than he had ever gone. And, uh, and there he wasted his substance uh, with riotous living. And uh, he just, just shot the money that his dad had given him. He wasted it, the Bible said, on riotous living. And, and, and Jesus said when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. He sent him out to feed the pigs. Now I've been around pigs a couple times uh, that's not my favorite place to be. Number one, there's not a lot of good smells that come around pigs, uh, pig farms. And number two, they don't eat appetizing things. They really don't. I, I went out one time, dad was teaching a Bible study to a farmer up in, up in uh, uh, Brother and Sister Strandberg. They were up in uh, uh, yeah, Mohaw, uh, North Dakota, and they had pigs. And this is my memory of pigs. They had a bucket that had a couple of half-eaten donuts in this bucket with some eggshells in this bucket and, I don't know, some grease and little bits of gravy and a little bit of, and, and you name it, it was in rice and whatever else, some mashed potatoes that had been sitting there for a while and, and some chicken bones and, 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 I mean... There wasn't nothing about that bucket that made me say, man, I'm wishing dinner was on its way. And that old farmer reached down and grabbed that bucket. Matter of fact, there were two of them. He grabbed one in each hand and he took it out and he dumped those buckets into that, into that trough. And those pigs, they didn't turn up their nose. They definitely defined their name. They were pigs. They just ate that stuff as quick and knocking each other out of the way to get to those old eggshells, to get to all that nasty mess as quick as they could. And the Bible said that this young man uh, took his dad's inheritance. He had money. He had everything going for him. And it, I don't think he intended on going all that far. It's just one little distance that he's going. It's just a little journey that I'm going to take and I'm going to go. I'm, I've got a place that I'm going to and I'm going to go just this little distance and then uh, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to have a family and I'm going to do everything right. And It wasn't anything big. I really don't believe that. I don't believe there was 20 things in his life. I believe there's probably just one thing. And when he came to himself, he found himself in a pig pen saying, you know, if, if I had a chance, I would eat what the pigs are eating. Just because of one thing. One little trip. It just, and uh, when he came to himself, the Bible said he came to himself and he said, my father has plenty 
And what in the world am I doing in this pig pen? And the Bible said, he said, I will arise and go unto my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned. And he said, and I know that it wasn't that much of a distance because he could still get there. Even though he was starving to death, he still had enough strength to get from where he was at to where his father lived. And while he was afar off, his father came running. Only one thing, just one minor thing, amen, was keeping him from the best meals, from the best place to stay, from the blessings of the family. It was just a little distance away. And it was that just that little thing that was separating him. I don't know what that thing was exactly, except that he had got to the point where, where, he, had, where he had allowed something in his life to keep him out of the father's house. Now I'm going to read one more, and I, and this is kind of an intro. This is a real interesting story, amen. But I want I want you to notice something in this story in the book of Luke, chapter number two, and verse number forty-one. And uh, I want you to get the setting of the scripture. This happened with a twelve-year-old, uh, a twelve-year-old kid by the name of Jesus. Dalton, how old are you, buddy? Twelve. Stand up here and help me just for a minute. Twelve years old. That's how old Jesus was whenever this happened. You got the verses? Verse number 41 starting, I'm sorry. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. They did this every year. From the time that they were, from the time he was a baby, until he was, and when he was twelve years old, this was the first time he's going to go to the temple. And they went up to the Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Are you ready for this? Okay. And uh, when they had fulfilled the days, they stayed there and they worshipped because the temple was away from their hometown, and they stayed there for that amount of days. And as they returned. The child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. You sit right here on this on this altar. And you stay right here just for a minute. And as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Uh, be good, son. I'll, uh, I'll be back in a little bit and uh, we'll be leaving this afternoon at such and such a time. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're going to be leaving by about 4 o'clock this afternoon. That's what Joseph was saying and Mary was saying to Jesus. We'll be leaving about this time of the day. Do you understand what I'm doing here? We're getting ready to leave. And about 4 o'clock we'll be leaving. And uh, there was a whole group of people that, was, uh, that were in the caravan and, and Jesus and, uh, and Jesus was there and mom and dad took off walking and they began to walk and as they walked they didn't know that Jesus was missing they didn't know anything about it amen about what was happening and G and 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 the Bible said what's that next verse say and when they supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey they got out one day later A day down the road, whenever my daughter was five years old, we were at Home Depot, and uh, and I was working, and my wife, my wife came in to pay a bill or something, and uh, and all of a sudden she said, in just that amount of time, she come running to me crying, and she said, "Larissa's gone," and I called my manager and I said, "Stop the doors." Code Adam, they, they paged it over the system and we stopped the doors and Larissa was by the paint picking up little paint samples. <laughs> we were scared to death running up and down every aisle. I was telling the guys on the job, I said, you know my daughter, go help me look for her. You know my daughter, go help, help me look for her. You know my daughter, you go help me look for her. And we had that store in a... a in an uproar we just you know sorry I know you're a customer I know you see my orange vest but I really don't care about you right now I got a daughter that's missing and that's rightfully so 
Now, I know that at 12 years old, you know, it'd be okay if he was missing for an hour or so. You just say, oh, he went down to the neighbors and he's over there playing, <laughs> you know, and he'll be back in an hour. But I know that Anna would probably just about have a cow if 24 hours later he hadn't shown back up. I know she wouldn't like that. Matter of fact, I got a feeling that by 24 hours, everybody in this church would be praying and would be doing everything in our power to get a hold of a 12-year-old kid that looks, you know, he probably looks about 14, 12, 13, 14. He's just, you know, he's growing up. He's getting to be a man. One of these days, he's going to be there. And it uh, scares me to death. I remember whenever he was that age. But he, but he was 12, but he was 12 years old. That's how old Jesus was, was 12 years old. And he's sitting, confounding the doctor's, and they, supposing him to be in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and their acquaintance. In other words, they just thought, oh, he's with one of the other family members, and so it's okay, we'll, uh, we'll catch up with him. Can you imagine how Mary and Joseph must have felt whenever they finally realized that Jesus was missing? You, you talk about scared to death. And they went to this family member, and they went to this family member, and they went to this acquaintance, and they went to this. Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? No, I haven't seen him. I, have, I don't know where he's at. Have you seen Jesus? I don't know. He's, have you seen Jesus? No, I haven't seen him. And, and all of a sudden, it re, they realize Jesus, their son, is missing. I'll read down. When they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. They went a day. And, uh, and they've looked, and they began to look for him. And it came to pass that after three days, that after three days, they found him in the temple. And I'm stopping. They left him. It took them a day to figure out that he was gone. But it took them two days to find the one that they left one day and uh, it was just a short distance 24 hours is all it was but it, it was one day distance from Jesus just one day distant from Jesus took two days to find Jesus the Lord spoke to me today, and I feel like I know it was the Lord. And every day that you go distant from Jesus, it takes twice as long to get back to the place that you were at. Just that one little distance. Didn't they loved him? They wouldn't have left him. If they would have known that Jesus was with them, they would never have left. It was just something little. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have left him in the temple. They, wouldn't, they didn't know what was going on. They would never have been away from him. They had they had tried to rearrange some things or do something. But as they wandered just a little bit, as they started heading back toward home, just... Just something simple. It wasn't all that big of a deal. I mean, he's got to be with one of the family members. It's got to be something around. And they left and took, and took one day's journey was all that it took. And whenever they got that one day's journey away, they realized he was missing. Now I wonder today, how many times have we allowed ourselves to get a day's distance away from the Master? Oh, I wouldn't intend on doing something like that, but one thing just separated me. It's just one thing that is all that it took. And, uh, and, and I've got to find him again. Now, I've got good news for you in this place that the difference between Mary and Joseph and you is that you don't have to wait two days. You don't have to wait a week. Amen. But that one little thing can be changed around in one service. And that one little thing that might be separating you 
from eternal life can be changed in this service today. You don't have to. and they, You don't have to be a part of those that, say, that Jesus looks at and says, oh, I wish that they could change just that one little thing. But in one service, you could change all of that around. When they, and, and today, I guess what my, what my question would be was, I wonder what one thing would you allow to keep you from being with Jesus? Dalton, would there be anything that would keep you from being with Jesus? No. Would there ever be a friend that might keep you from being with Jesus? No. It's important. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to everybody about the same way. The most important thing in all of your life is that you never let anything Never let anything. You're going to have some friends that's going to try to throw drugs your way and you're going to say no because Jesus is more important. You're going to have friends that might throw some alcohol your way and you've got to be able to tell them, no, I don't do that because I love Jesus too much. There's going to be some friends that's going to try to get you to cuss and you're going to say, no, I love Jesus too much. There are going to be friends that will try to get you to lie. And you're going to have to say, no, I love Jesus too much. Because it's those little things that will cause you to lose out. And, and I, I know that I'm talking to him. But if the rest of you all can listen, you'll know the way that I'm talking. Amen. Now, Jesus, amen, is so concerned about you. Amen. And, and Jesus looked at that rich man. Amen. That I took my text from. And he said, Man, dude, you got everything together, but there's only one little thing. And you've got to make sure, and I've got to make sure, and we've got to make sure that if there's something, it may seem so small. It may seem like nothing else matters, you know, and it's just, why in the world would that be? But it, and it seems so silly that that one thing. But every one of us, we have some things that if we ain't careful could really mess up our lives. You know what that dude, that rich man did? That rich man walked away and said, I would rather live 60, 70 years and be buried and spend an eternity away from God than I would to do what I know is right to do and spend eternity in heaven. Isn't that the most ignorant thing you could ever think of? And what I encourage everybody here today is there's some things and we need to be able, every one of us need to be able to say, I'm not going to let one thing. I mean, we all know what the basics are. John, John 3 said, except a man, Jesus said, except a man is born again of the water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It, and so, I don't know. The way I read it, then it would be that repentance is important, baptism is important, and the Holy Ghost is important. It's, it's so important that it would be like the rich man walking away and saying, I've got a lot of riches and I think that that's the one thing. You know, there's some people that don't want to live a life separate from the world. And that's the only thing. They got, they got everything else together, but they don't want to be separate from the world. There's some folks that just want to live their life and they say, oh, I don't need, I don't need to be in the house of God on a Sunday. I don't need to be in the house of God on a Wednesday. It don't matter that I'm faithful to the house of God or not. It's that one thing. And... Uh, I wonder how many people would be lost in eternity because of just one little puny thing. Because there really is a heaven and there really is a hell. And there really is a judgment scene of Christ. There's a time when God's going to come and, and call us and He's going to say, okay, I, only on that time, it's, there's not going to be cha time to change it. It's, it's either, either you made it or you didn't. And, uh, and I feel it's important. I believe with all of my heart it's important. 
I wouldn't be acting like this today. I wouldn't be talking like this if I didn't. I, I love you folks too much just to say, let's waste our time and talk about the importance of one thing. I'm not, I'm not trying to waste anybody's time. I want everybody here to be saved. And as, as, we, as we pray, as we close this service off, I want you to examine yourself. I, I, I've never been put here as the hand of God, as a judge of God. I just gotta, I've got to examine myself. Is there one thing that I would be lacking? And that's the question you need to ask yourself. And if there's something little in your life that you have allowed to grow up into a monster, you need to go and get rid of that thing so that Jesus could say, you know, you really are the Lord, and that I really am the Lord of your life. As we pray today, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Let's stand and bow our heads and pray. Come on, everybody. Thank you. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that you've spoken to my heart. And I'm praying, Lord Jesus, that in this service there would be somebody that would take care of one little thing in their life. That there would be nothing that would separate them from the love of Jesus Christ. And if you're in this place today and, and there's something little that you've been letting go, why not? And I know we've given one altar call, but I'm giving another one today. And if there's something, there's one little thing that you've kind of let creep up in your life, I'm opening these altars to you today. The greatest life that you could ever live is in Jesus Christ. It's eternal life. And I'm giving an altar call right now as my, as my mom is playing. I wonder if there would be those that would say, I, I really want everything right. Amen. Why don't you come? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus.